So when I first got into 3D printing, I always wanted to print out props and helmets, but I always would have to print it out into multiple pieces and I really have wanted a machine that could print all of this in one go. So in this video, we're gonna check out the LK5 Pro from Longer and see if this could be a good option for you, especially if you wanna print stuff that's big. So this is the most recent printer in Longer's line. So before this, the 4 Series is pretty popular, but this is their most recent, and I think it's their biggest. You're actually gonna have a work bed, if I take this off, of 300 by 300 by 400, or 11.8 by 11.8 by about 15 and 3 quarters inches. So a pretty good area where you can do bigger things like this Mandalorian helmet. So a few nice things about this right off the bat uh, were these uh, kind of triangle support. So especially as you get a printer that goes bigger, having the whole frame rigid as your extreme is moving all around is a really big deal. So having these extra supports helps keep kind of the flex down on this guy, although it's like wobbling on the table. Uh, the printer itself is pretty stable. It has a filament runout detector right here in the back. Actually had that happen a couple times on me. So whenever my spool was gone, um, it would pause the print. I could reload it and I could keep going again. That's an upgrade that a lot of people add on to like an Ender 3, but it's great that this comes with it. I'm gonna turn it on. So you're probably gonna hear the fans, um, which is like the loudest part of it, um, but overall it actually is pretty quiet when it's printing. But now that it is on, it's got a color touch screen so you can get into pretty much all of the settings right there. You can load in your files, you can print them. That is also how you're going to level this machine. So it doesn't have automatic bed leveling. So that is one drawback, but it kind of has the standard five point menu where it'll drop the extruder down to those different points and then you'll level it with these screws down here at the bottom so you have a level bed. Now one of the big things on their website that they push is this lattice glass work bed. They say it makes it really great for adhesion as well as the ability to remove the prints and I pretty much have found that. It does a great job as a heated bed and the prints stick pretty well but then they're really easy to remove once the bed cools down and actually once this helmet had finished as the bed was cooling down you could hear some of the like crack crack cracks of the supports kind of releasing from the bed. So once this had fully cooled I literally just picked it up and took it somewhere else. Uh, and one thing you probably have noticed this didn't come straight off the print I already have done some post-processing with this just because I was excited and I wanted to put it on. But you can definitely see even with supports, there is plenty of room on here to print that guy out. So another thing you can do is resume your print even if your entire machine shuts off, which is great. And then for some more of the specifics, you have a Bowden extruder with a Teflon tube so you can handle high temperatures. And then it comes with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but you can change that out pretty easy. Now we're gonna jump into the computer real quick to give you a better idea of the actual work area size and the type of models like this Mandalorian helmet that you can actually get into your printer. All right, so we have the printer pulled up in Cura just so you see how much space you've got with this 300 by 300 by 400. This is the full helmet. And actually, if we rotate it, it and we tilt it back just a little. And you can see we can fit it right in there just barely, uh, but we have definitely enough space to fit that on the print bed and you actually have a good bit more space higher. Uh, this is for another character in the show. This is for Bo-Katan. This is actually gonna be for my daughter. And you can see this one just comes in directly, fits great. Uh, and that one's gonna be good to go to print. But then we can also go a good bit bigger. So this is the Sith Trooper helmet, which is like a big Stormtrooper helmet. But you can see I can bring this one in directly and you can print out a big Stormtrooper size helmet as well. So I didn't actually film the assembly process, but it's pretty easy for the most part. This entire bottom comes already assembled. So you're basically just putting this whole gantry together, but it goes together real easy. I think it took me about 30 minutes to get this thing up and running from the box. Okay, so let's actually talk about the prints. Just like with any 3D printer, we start out with a bench sheet. This was actually preloaded with settings that came directly on the SD card with the machine. And I actually had this running at 100 millimeters per second at 200 Celsius for the extruder. And you can see overall, pretty good print quality. It didn't have much stringing. Um, you can definitely see I had a little bit of kind of a layer shift and then a little bit of ghosting, especially right there around the circle, but for the most part, especially straight out of the machine, 
um, it was doing a good job. But I did notice that it seemed like there were some cooling issues to where the actual filament wasn't cooling down fast enough, so things were kind of shifting as it was printing. And really that's kind of the main drawback I've seen with this printer is the actual uh, kind of exhaust nozzle or the cooling nozzle. And you can see this is a different color, this isn't black, and that's actually because this is the one that came with the machine. And what's kind of crazy is they had this file for this guy already preloaded on the SD card. So I guess they know that's an issue and it might be hard to tell, but the issue really is, is this is a little bit too high. So the nozzle and that layer of the print isn't getting hit with the air as best as it can. This one drops it down a little bit further. And when I did attach it, I actually noticed it was doing a good bit better. And then actually I printed the Benchy again, but you can actually see the cooling was working so well that it was actually lifting off of the heated bed because I actually manually adjusted some of the settings to kind of counteract hopefully that the cooling was working a little bit better. So it will take it a little bit to get dialed in, but I definitely recommend the upgraded nozzle. It's actually what I used to print the entire helmet. And then once it got started, it did a really good job. Now you might be wondering, how do you take a 3D model like this and then turn it into something real? And to help with that, I wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online platform with tons and tons of classes. And actually, there are some really good 3D printing ones, including this one that is actually featured from Lauren, um, who is a designer that will kind of walk you through the real basics of not only 3D printing, but also 3D design. And even if you guys want to design your own thing, so like you wanna model your own helmet, they have great classes on 3D modeling programs like Blender or Fusion 360. 60, that you can jump in and make your own thing, send it to whatever slicer you want to use, and actually print something out that is real. They actually have a seven day free trial, which is great if you just want to jump in and see what it is all about. And they also have a promo running right now where you can check out all the details right down below. Okay, let's get back into the review. Now, really the only other issue I was running into was this bed. It might be hard to see because the entire table shakes. You definitely have a wobble to it, and there's some screws underneath that you can tighten up that will reduce that movement. But on the helmet, I was seeing that I was getting some shaking as the thing got higher up. So to get a little bit of ghosting with the printing, just because the entire print was wobbling just a little bit. But once I actually went in and tightened that down, everything was good to go. And then I actually put the entire printer on the ground, off the table, because the table's shaky. And then I reduced the print speed. It was 100 millimeters per second. And once I went a little bit lower, then everything was good. And I was starting to get some pretty good prints. Now this definitely isn't at the high end of 3D printers. Uh, probably the biggest issue is this isn't built with a full enclosure. Uh, and then especially once you get really big, more often than not, you'll actually have like a full square frame that will keep this thing way more rigid. And because it's open air, you'll run into some of the issues that you have with pretty much any printer that's like this, when you're having to print materials that need a higher temperature on the nozzle. But for this style XYZ Cartesian printer that is open, this actually does a really, really nice job. You can definitely compare this with the stuff from Creality, like the Ender 3 Max, so the, the taller one, or the CR10 series, or even the Anycubic Mega X. Now, I know these Mandalorian helmets have been all over YouTube. I actually got this one from Daryl over at The Broken Nerd. I think it was off of his Patreon. I'll include a link down below if you want to print it out yourself uh, because we do have Halloween coming up and I really got to get working on my costume. So let me know what you guys think of this as well as any printers you would like to see me review in the future. We're going to be doing a lot more 3D printing on this channel in addition to lasers and CNCs and all kinds of fun digital fabrication stuff. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.